Hey, everybody. Welcome to Inside Geocaching HQ, the podcast about what is happening at HQ in Seattle. I am Chris Ronan. My geocaching username is Rock Chalk. And today I am happy to share a conversation with Genevieve from HQ's marketing team. She is part of the group here at HQ that has produced the Cosmic Quest souvenir promotion. From July 22nd until September 1st, you can help our friends from outer space just by geocaching. Let's hear more about it right now. Okay, so Genevieve is here and we are talking about the Cosmic Quest souvenir promotion that is happening beginning July 22nd. And before we get into that, of course, we'll remind everybody of who you are. I think the last time uh, we talked here with the podcast was probably maybe the last souvenir promotion, probably around this time last year. So for people that uh, maybe didn't listen to that or just need a refresher, what is your work here at HQ, your title, and what kind of stuff you do on a day-to-day basis besides being an intermediary for for life form in outer space. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I work on the marketing team here at HQ, and I help put together the newsletters um, that our geocachers get in their inbox monthly or weekly. And I also help with souvenir promotions like Cosmic Quest, last year's Wheel of Challenges, and then a number of other things supporting the marketing team. But the big one is the communication pieces with the newsletter and the blog, and then souvenir promotions. So people may not realize it, but you are in their ear quite a bit in a variety of ways. (laughs) Yeah. If you read the blog, you've probably seen my name as a byline a few times. Right. And so at some point, it appears that you helped to decipher this message that was received, right? (laughs) From from... Uh, mm-hmm. th- these these life forms who were rove who were uh, on Mars mm-hmm. and they spotted something. So uh, explain it for people that haven't yeah. read the blog. What, what's 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 happening with Cosmic Quest? So as um, some geocachers may know, geocaching does have a limited presence in outer space. We've got um, a trackable on the Mars rover. And you know that trackables always say, like, discover on geocaching.com. So that got them curious. They did a little research. They fired up their web connection. Exactly. <laughs> got on a browser. And um, they came to learn what geocaching was and got really excited because they have a passion for exploration, for discovery, which ties right in with geocaching. Sure. And so they decided it's time to come to the game board for geocaching, Planet Earth. So they came, they're in touch with us. and Well, they're in touch with you specifically, it sounds like. Specifically, yes. I'm I'm the point person for communications um, with our friends from outer space. Right. And they're traveling around the planet, um, finding as many geocaches as they can. The tricky piece is, though, that on on this journey they're on, they're realizing that their spaceship that they're traveling in is running out of fuel. Well, that's a problem. That is a problem. And, of course, we want to do anything we can to support their exploration, their continued exploration. Of course. Um, We're having a great time building intergalactic friendship with them. Sure. So it turns out that we can actually help them. Um, The fuel that their spaceship runs on is positive energy. And what better way is there to generate positive energy than going out and geocaching with your friends, with with new geocachers, experienced ones? Um, That's a great way to have a good time. And that good time, that that can fuel the spaceship. Man, it would be so great if all of our Mm -hmm. modes of transportation ran on positive energy. It really that could would, be, yeah. <laughs> that could be fueled by geocaching, wouldn't mm-hmm. it? So so this works out great. So so July 22nd yes. is when this begins, and it goes through September 1st. So we have a limited time to fuel the spaceship. Mm-hmm. And how are we going to go about doing that? 
That's a great question. So we're trying um, to- 15 million units exactly. of fuel, by the way. Yeah. Which is there a conversion for gallons or is that- um, The units liters? that they use, they're just so foreign to us. Um, just call it we can't unit. quite convert. Yeah. Oh, sure. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> okay. So 15 million units of fuel. Exactly. How do we, how do we get to that number? Um, so geocaching. So any fines, they are going to count towards- fueling the spaceship. And so different types of like geocaching fines or activities, they will generate varying amounts of fuel. So activating a trackable, for instance, that will generate one unit of fuel. Mm -hmm. Attending an event. And so logging your attended log, posting that log for the event, that will be three uh, units of fuel. And then receiving a favorite point on an owned geocache, that will be two units of fuel, which means that also if you give a favorite point, then that's two units that the person right. is getting for their individual score. But it's also two units for the whole community. Sure. Yeah. Because we're we're counting those units for the global geocaching community that we're all working towards together to have that total. And then finding an earth cache, logging that found it for an earth cache, that is five units of fuel and an adventure um, location or any other type of found it log for a geocache, that's just a single unit of fuel. And okay. so we'll get out, we'll be geocaching and posting those logs for our finds, and that's what will help fuel the spaceship. And how do we, how do people keep track of, of mm -hmm. that? Like the the overall effort to get to 15 million units. Where, where do we keep track of that? So we'll be able to keep track of it on the leaderboard. So the leaderboard typically just has that point total that you see um, for what you individually are achieving on the leaderboard, how many points you have. But during Cosmic Quest, in addition to your individual point total, we'll also have a total for the whole geocaching community. So that's what we'll keep our eyes on to see uh, the numbers go up and reach that 15 million goal. And something to note as we're checking that leaderboard every day, hoping we get closer to 15 million, is that it just updates once a day. So we'll be able to see every day how many more units of fuel we have since the day before. And with that updating once a day, just so you're not surprised, on the first day, the total is probably going to be zero. But that doesn't mean that people aren't out geocaching. It's just because the time that it updates is the time that the campaign starts. Right. So... Make sure to check again on Tuesday um, if you want to see how many units of fuel are generated in that first day of the campaign. And yeah, so if you, at any time during the promotion, if you look at 10 o'clock in the morning and it has one number, don't expect to come back at nine o'clock at night and see a different number. Exactly. It's, uh, very most likely going to be uh, the same number uh, until the next day. So I, I guess this is a little bit of a different situation in that you got this communication, it just kind of fell in your lap and mm -hmm. we had a, but normally when we're thinking about a, uh, a souvenir promotion, something like wheel of challenges, for instance, which I think was strictly from us. There were no, yeah, we did not, our outside. satellites did not pick up okay. anything for that one that just came from us. So let's talk about ones like that. Uh, so how far in advance are you thinking about mm -hmm. uh, the, the marketing team? I'm sure it's, it's a variety of people that work on and other people in the company. Um, mm -hmm. You can talk about who all it is, but how far in advance are you thinking about how, what one of these is going to look like and, and what the goals are going to be and, and, and stuff like that? Yeah. So in, in one way, we're always thinking about it because we're always trying to make sure we capture any ideas we have throughout the year where we think, oh, that might be something that's a fun idea for a souvenir promotion. Or if we hear from the community ideas that they have, we always want to take note of that. So we're always thinking about it. But then the really kind of concrete planning, um, depending on when a souvenir promotion will take place, it probably starts in the fall. So honestly, not too long after um, Cosmic Quest wraps up, we'll be thinking about whatever comes next. Usually we try to have maybe six months 
ideally maybe even a little more of time to really sit down and think through what we want to do and then all the time to build it with the community team, the marketing team, engineers, really a lot of teams here at HQ come together to work on these. Right. And besides our motivation to help with these 15 million units of fuel, we also maybe have some personal motivations as far as souvenirs. So Mm -hmm. what all can people get for themselves besides the altruistic side of this? Yeah. (laughs) So there are two souvenirs that players, geocachers, um, can earn based on their individual generation of fuel. (laughs) So if, um, if a geocacher on their own contributes 20 units of fuel, which is the same as 20 leaderboard points, they will get the super fuel cacher souvenir. Ah. And if on their own, they contribute 100 units of fuel, they will get the ultra fuel cacher souvenir. So those are two that um, anyone can achieve on their own based on how much they go out and geocache and generate fuel. And then there's also a souvenir that Everyone who participates in Cosmic Quest will earn if, when, um, we reach that 15 million units of fuel goal. So that is the third souvenir. And there is also an opportunity at Shop Geocaching. I see there's some cool stuff that's out there Mm -hmm. uh, related to Cosmic Quest. A lot of neat items there, too. Yes, yeah. The shop and our creative team uh, put in a lot of thought into how to celebrate Cosmic Quest with different trackables and fun items. Um, My personal favorite is the trackable collection where you see six of our friends from outer space, six different kind of characters there. You can get to know them and send them out on their own trackable adventures. Uh, We've also got really fun kind of stickers with the spaceship and other images and illustrations we have for Cosmic Quest. Some geo coins that are quite nice, if I do say so myself. I've got um, one on my desk that I admire every day um, and a bunch of other cool items, including cash containers. Um, yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff that we've got for Cosmic Quest there. Yeah, which which one do you have on your desk? I'm curious. Now, I have I'm, I'm the looking at the Cosmic Quest kind of logo oh, one. Yeah, yeah. It has a very nice finish. It really does, mm-hmm. <laughs> and a nice weight in the hand. I gotta say, it's it's one I'm going to be holding on to. I think. Yeah, I was looking at the uh, the 3D UFO mm-hmm. geocoin. It's pretty cute. Yeah, yeah, that one's cool. Oh, my wallet's going to get lighter <laughs> again. Okay, so again, just to kind of reiterate, July 22nd Mm -hmm. is when this thing starts, and then it continues through September 1st. And I don't want to think about what happens if we don't get enough fuel. I Mm -hmm. mean, I guess they're stuck on, they'd be stuck on Mars. They they might be stuck. Is there a backup plan here, or are we just, Um, this is just it? Well... I have great confidence, first of all, in the global geocaching yeah, community. I can tell that. I do too. I'm just trying to. <laughs> but I'm, no, I'm, but I'm the that's kind of person. A fair that, question. I'm the kind of person that tries to think in. Okay, what if you know? So yeah. So I don't know. We we're hoping we'll hit hit that that goal of by September 1st to hit 15 million, but. If we don't, we can still continue to geocache and generate positive energy. Give that as fuel. So maybe we'll see if there's a little longer tail to Cosmic Quest. Also, the really the the big win for Cosmic Quest, though that final souvenir would be nice. It's the joy of geocaching. <laughs> it's getting out there during the month of August and late July. And um, finding caches with with other geocachers, and you'll still be able to get those two souvenirs. So I think there's a lot to look forward to, even if the future is uncertain with that 15 million goal. Mm. Are you anticipating any more communication from our friends? I mean, as this mm-hmm. goes on, are they keeping an eye on, I mean, they've got to be maybe a mix of anxiety and, and excitement yeah. over, yeah. there's a lot. <laughs> Put on geocachers here with this to get them off there of is. Mars. Um, but our our friends from outer space, they have just fallen so in love with geocaching that even though, you know, their fuel is dwindling, 
they can't help but be having a good time because they're just traveling around finding all these cool caches. And they they are staying in touch with us. They've actually been sending us postcards from different geocaches that they're visiting. So there's a good chance that they'll continue um, to send us some postcards. Let us know where they are, what geocaches they're finding. It's maybe, you know, not the best strategy if they're trying to keep their fuel usage low that they're traveling all around finding geocaching, but they just can't help but express this passion that they have for the game. You know, I, I got to mention that a postcard that they sent us mm-hmm. from New Mexico, mm-hmm. I've actually stayed right outside where that, that geocache is located. At least when I found it, uh-huh. it was at a place where a couple of old train cars have been turned into living quarters. So oh. like a kind of a bed and breakfast type mm-hmm. of a situation. And, and a few years back, I, I stayed there and I didn't know that there was a cache there until oh, I was about really? to leave. And the proprietor of the place saw, I think maybe saw a geocaching logo on my shirt or vehicle or whatever. And they, and they said, Oh, did you know about this geocache? And somehow I hadn't loaded it into my GPS or, or whatever. So, uh, so yeah, when I saw that postcard, it kind of brought back some memories when I clicked in on the cache that they had, that, 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 that they had found. So mm-hmm. kind of maybe feel some kinship with, <laughs> with our friends. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. yeah. So, well, this has been great. I got to let you go because I know you have to be monitoring. We might get some communications. Yeah. I've yeah, more postcards. Check those satellites, our mailbox. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, this has been great. And... If anybody has questions, where should they go for more information about Cosmic Quest? Mm -hmm. Um, So the first place to go is our blog, because that's where we're um, sharing. We've got a big blog post with a lot of FAQs, so that's a great place to look. And we'll also have additional blog posts with, you know, sharing postcards or other updates Also, our social media, um, Facebook for geocaching is a great place to look. And if um, anyone has like particular questions related to Cosmic Quest that they're not seeing answers for, they can always write into us in our help center. That was Genevieve from the marketing team at Geocaching HQ. You can visit the Geocaching blog for more details about Cosmic Quest. And if there is something that you would like for us To cover on the podcast, you can send us an email with your suggestion at podcast at geocaching.com. That is podcast at geocaching.com. For Genevieve and me and our friends from outer space and all the lackeys at Geocaching HQ, happy caching. Happy caching.